Welcome, welcome. Today we are making some more free terrain for our tabletop battles and adventures using Weta Workshop techniques. Luckily for you all, I have flown to the creative holy land of New Zealand and got officially certified by the Wacky Creative Workshop itself. As you can see, I have this super fancy, super official, super legit signed certificate. So let's hop into this new project, which of course means clearing our workstation. For making this awesome, pretty natural looking terrain, we will only really need two things, some foil and some hot glue. That's it, that's all we need. Now, some optional things that we might be able to upgrade with are a spoon, you'll see why later, some sponge, and maybe a coffee grinder. Now let's hop to a live demonstration of how we can sculpt some awesome things from this foil. Well bam! We've moved locations. And also, we're doing this live. Whoa, these are my real hands. So, what are we doing today? Well, we are making some terrain out of tin foil as we have already talked about. This is Weta's dirty little secret. We're making this little terrain. And I've also grabbed my Felgor captain as a scale reference. Now these are pieces of terrain that I built in New Zealand at Oda Workshop, but I did it without any models. So they're not quite the right scale. I mean, they could work, they're pretty good. But my idea was that you'd be able to go under the rib cage with this guy. Now I chose this guy because he's the tallest model because of his sword being held up and I want to be able to actually make them walk under the train and stuff like that. But we can see the idea here, the general idea of what we're gonna need to do, where we can kind of make any kind of models. Now he doesn't quite sit on the side like I was hoping he could sit on this little edge here. Maybe my Tau could actually do that. But here's the idea. The general idea is making some stuff out of tin foil and it's pretty, it's pretty decent. It won't fall apart super well. I'll show you different ways we can do this. It's very easy. All you need, as we've described already, all of this is DIY, so you won't need anything but a spoon, some tin foil, and a hot glue gun. Perfect. Primer will also help later when we start painting. But what I want to do for this terrain is I want to actually make an interesting landscape similar to this rock that I made earlier. Uh, I want to make an arid landscape, um, kind of like Utah or um, Nevada, where it's kind of rocky terrain like this and it's more natural. We'll even make some of our own um, whatever this is called, whatever this fluffy stuff is called. We'll try and make our own out of that, of that, out of some sponges. I have some dried sponges here that we'll try and make our own um, extra stuff out of. Anyhow, I want to try and make an exact, a cool map for Kill Team, since I'm going to be playing some more Kill Team soon. So here I've drawn the exact size of a kill team board. Now it's not, it's too big to see on the camera, but I'm gonna try and design a area that I want to try and make terrain for. So, first of all, I'm thinking some kind of cool bridge here in the middle, like, like this, but much larger. It would be very cool, some kind of arch. So we can draw, like this is where I think the bridge would be cool. And there could be some rocks about this size that end up doing something like that. I'm kind of trying to make it even. So we have a cool um, arch. Of course, this is going to be three dimensional. Um, we can have some smaller rocks as well. Maybe something more this size in here. And another rock, kind of like it's it's a valley. Maybe something more this size. 
And something smaller over here. Um, maybe a bit of a small rock over here. And some rocks in the corners. Hmm, I could go in the corners. Also, on top of this arch, we could have even other kinds of rocks stacked on top. We can try and design it so it's kind of even, no matter which side the kill team you're coming at from is. So we can kind of have a similar kind of shaped rock on this side. And a uh, similar kind of big square rock here with a smaller rock down there. I kind of want even another small rock kind of like, like that. Maybe more could be one. I think I got a gap between be cool. Though. So two small rocks would be kind of cool. Um, and of course, we can have this other kind of rock there. Um, and how do we eat up these corners? Hmm. Maybe just having some kind of rock on that very edge. And of course, we'll be able to redesign the board when we actually build these terrain. Like, we actually set up the kill team map. So we'll be able to see that. This is the plan. This is what I want to build, and we're going to do it entirely out of tin foil uh, and hot glue. And we're going to paint it up, and it's going to be one of the fastest terrains that you'll probably ever build because it's going to be super fast, super simple. So let's get started. Pardon any kind of screechiness, but let's get started with teaching the, ter the techniques that I've been certified by Weta. Four. So we're just gonna take... I'm gonna stop talking while I rip this out, but take a sheet of tin foil. Perfect. We have a sheet of tin foil now, and there's a few things we can do with this tin foil. I will try and mute this in editing if it's too loud, which I will guarantee I get to hear first before any viewers. So Technique one, we can rip rip a strip of it as such, and you can roll it up. When you roll it up, try and keep it loose-ish so that there's still some air in there. And we can see here that we kind of have a a rod. Now this rod can be kind of a start to a tree, if you will. It can be the base of a, a trunk to a tree. And you can build more of those rods and twist them in. Let's just do that real quick. And the best part about tinfoil is it's really easy to undo, as you can see here. So we can, I mean, it's not the greatest tree for sure, but you know, try and put some of uh, like some grass clippings on top and glue some of that to it. And it should be fine. We can build flatter, more pieces to it. But if we want to just keep adding to it, of course, that's where our trusty handy glue gun comes in. Hot glue gun, which hopefully everyone has. Now we'll just give that a second to warm up. And in the meantime, we'll talk about rocks. And we'll come back to this tree later. Let's get another sheet of tin foil. Now what you want to do with this tin foil is crinkle it uh, lightly. Uh, so that the texture side is out and the shiny side is in. Let's see what that looks like. So we've crinkled it lightly. We now have this kind of look to it and we can start to kind of lightly compress it into a ball shape. And there you go. We now have the start of our rock. So we can compress this even further and from here we can start to sculpt other things. So this is already looking pretty rock-like, but if we want to go in a different direction, let's say we want to go and try and make a skull, like this dragon skull, we can try for that. So the dragon skull, you just start to press in at different areas of the tinfoil, and you can just start to kind of sculpt. And we'll try and make those cavities of the eyes. 
and we'll make that under side of its of its jaw. Right? Just start to press in. Get those eyebrows out by pressing in our fingers like that. Now it's not quite looking like a dragon, <laughs> but it is starting to take a shape from sculpting this. It's looking a little bit more like a dino skull to me than a, like it's got some big eyes to it. And it looks more like a raptor maybe. But nonetheless, we're starting to get a different kind of shape here just by having that ball of tinfoil and pressing in on it. Now our spoon can come in handy here because you can just take it and you can start to press into it even further or smooth it out with the back side of your spoon. You can really dig into it and start to make some different kinds of shapes. And it'll also smooth out the tin foil as well. So while this isn't the greatest skull, you can see how easy it is to make different shapes with tinfoil. Now hopefully our hot glue gun has heated up enough and we can see how we can get maybe some kind of horns in here. Let's take that tinfoil from earlier. So here we've made two new shapes real quick out of tinfoil. And we have our hot glue gun ready to go. And let's see if it's ready. There we go. Ooh, that's some fun coloring. But this is the first time I'm using this ever. But we can stick our horns to it. Get some more glue on the other side. Careful not to burn yourself. Of course, tinfoil is very conductive of heat. It's heat conductive. So <laughs> don't do that or else you might burn yourself. Um, so just be careful. And there you go. You have something kind of resembling a dragon skull. Or a bowl, maybe. Maybe its wings or its horns need to be further back. I don't know. But any areas that you're not super happy with, your tinfoil is not sticking together or whatever, that's what the hot glue is for. You can just get it in there and re glue it down. And of course, you can just shape things until you're happy. go. Kind of have kind of have a skull. <laughs> it's back heavy, but you can see the, the process. And if you're not happy with certain areas, like uh, this snout, you know, it's kind of not the greatest. Just take some more tin foil. Stick it to it, find that shape, great, I like that, get that hot glue in there, careful not to burn yourself of course, as I have glued myself and you will likely glue yourself as well, anyhow. There you go. Now we've filled out that corner a little bit more as well. Very nice. So that's the process of what we're going to do today. Just gluing pieces together, making some rocks. So what I'm doing here is just crumpling up balls of tinfoil and gluing them together in different 
clumps to make these larger rocks shapes. I'm flattening out different parts of the rock to add surfaces for our kill team members to sit on and other miniatures to sit on. And it's just a process of combining pieces of crumpled up pieces of tinfoil. Make sure to keep it loose. If you clump it too fast, too quickly, it'll get really dense, as I know you are all familiar with, and you want to keep it kind of a light crinkle instead of really crushing it down to that nice metal ball. All right, so what I've done here is this is gonna be my arch eventually. I'm gonna flatten that out and add stuff to it, but I wanna keep this arch kind of shape to it. And I've found that glue, hot glue when it dries, as you know, is quite rubbery. So here we have my skeleton rib cage and I glued the top of it, which is how I found out about this. And it, it keeps its shape pretty well even though tinfoil is supposed to be able to bend again, this stuff keeps its shape pretty well. So my hope here is that I'm building a kind of um, hot glue gun structure here to keep the arch in, term, in, in, in an arch shape. I might call it, add some cross beams here like some, some sort of architect. But my hope here is that this hot glue on the bottom of this tin foil, once it's dry, will keep its shape and be a kind of skeleton for us to build off of. So I'm just gonna set that aside for the time being. Alright, checking in on our structure here, it seems to be kind of working. It doesn't, it may be not dry all the way yet, so we'll just let it do its thing a little bit more, and maybe we'll build on top of it as well. But it's going pretty, pretty okay, I think. Let's try and, uh, Let's try and get some more in there, maybe. All right, now while I finish sculpting up these different pieces I have planned out, let's talk about the history of this technique and how Weta Workshop uses it. And by history of this technique, I specifically mean Weta's history with this. Now, Weta Workshop's journey with this foil sculpting started with this sculptor by the name of Kim Beaton. The story goes that Miss Kim Beaton had a dream not too long after her father passed away where her father came back to her as a tree troll. So she made that dream a reality by making an armature of cardboard laying on tin foil for volume and definition to create her father in the form of that tree troll. Weta saw this and hired Miss Kim Beaton as fast as they could. From there, Kim and her husband, Warren Beaton, who I met, started their journey to develop a sculpting material that is more accessible and easy to work with. They ended up making Paltia Premium, an epoxy cement that goes over the cardboard and tinfoil armature that they loved and can be sculpted and modeled into more refined shapes. It then hardens into a very sturdy and permanent material. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to try out this technique and to make some more detailed terrains for the tabletop adventures. Now let's get back to finishing up this tin terrain of ours. As you have seen in the background while I've talked, you can sculpt a bunch of different shapes if you are just doing rocks like I am. Because I am making this terrain for wargaming, I'm trying to make it a bunch of pieces that I can rearrange in different battles for different battle maps and different forms. But if you are building something like a roleplay adventure, you can certainly build much more unique and grand pieces that match your story. For instance, a narrow canyon with high cliffs your adventurers have to pass through, always worried about an ambush. No matter what you are building or sculpting, it will be great. And once you have sculpted it, it's time to prep it for painting. I would recommend a cheap primer. 
I am using Rust-Oleum, flat gray, and flat white. I have a link in the description where you can get some on Amazon for cheap. Moving on to painting. Now, while I have an idea in mind of what I want the terrain to look like, it is always, always a good idea to start by looking up reference or inspiration. In fact, it'd be a good idea to do this before even sculpting. I initially wanted to make a desert canyon style terrain, similar to the Arches in Arches National Park in Utah. However, I still looked up inspiration to see what colors I wanted to make things, and I had some ideas from a friend who introduced this Star Wars planet that we're looking at right now. This picture right here definitely became my end goal and main inspiration. So it is that arch from Arches National Park, but also with snow, which if you have seen any of my past videos, you know that I love frost and snow and just a general cold aesthetic. But it doesn't have to be for you. You could easily sculpt very similar style rocks as I do in this video, basically following me one for one. But you can paint them gray and top them off with a bit of grass foliage and they become the cliffs and rocks of a jungle or high plains. Or paint them a bit more brown and top them with a stringy vine or a dark green type of foley and you can get muddy rocks of a swamp. Or you could sculpt them a bit more pointy and jagged and then paint them bright blues and purples and make a crystal cave. You can make so many different kinds of terrains and environments just by sculpting these tin rocks. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to try and make any of these other kinds of terrains that I just mentioned, or just want to see me try and use this technique to make those different fantastical variants that I've just gone through. Now that I have my paint mixed up and have started to apply a base layer, let's talk about what I am using. I am using the cheapest and largest acrylic paints I could find at my local craft store because I knew I was going to be painting a lot of terrain with not much need for good quality. So I would not recommend you use your miniature paints for this. I have some cheap paints linked in the description once again for your convenience. As you can see I have mixed a decent amount of red and orange color. This is going to be my base color. I'm slathering that paint on to get it into all the nooks and crannies that the tin foil naturally made. Also, a nice thick coat of paint will keep the shape of the rocks later on. Now we have all of our pieces painted with their base coat. It's time to get a little bit more detailed. A little technique I also learned while I was down in Wellington was loading up a spray bottle or a little spritzer bottle with extremely watered down paint. I'm going to mix up a dark color because I plan on doing a light dry brush so I don't want to have double dark colors. Now we can start spraying. Now something I should have foreseen but didn't is the amount of mess and wet that will get everywhere. So make sure you set up with plenty of space or on a surface you don't mind getting dirty. If you have a garage, might be a great place to do this. After spraying, we can see some nice difference in the texture on the surface that breaks up the monotony of our base color. Now we can do a bit of dry brushing to get even more depth on these rocks. And there are lots of edges to brush up on, which is nice. So mix up a lighter color and brush off as much paint as needed to start that dry brushing. I am using the largest dry brush I have because this is a lot of surface area we need to cover. A final step to get that snowy look is to actually get that snow. Here is where those sponges and coffee grinder can come in handy. We are going to make our own foliage particles. Take bits of sponge of whatever color you are trying to make particles for and throw them in the grinder. I am doing snow, so I chose a white sponge. But if you want that high plains look, just throw a green sponge in instead. Grind up that sponge, being careful not to do it too long if your sponge is dry, because it will heat up. Mine was smoking a tiny bit at the end, 
so don't start a fire. <laughs> I'm going to mix up a bit of my snow glue that I like to use for my bases. It's just a mix of Elmer's glue, satin varnish, and also the snow powder stuff from Army Painter. Also linked in the description if you'd like it. I'm applying this snow glue to my terrain in a downward motion so it only catches the sky facing surfaces of the rock. Then in areas where I imagine snow really piles up, like the corners of rocks or the 90 degree connection points of the rocks, I'll stick our DIY sponge foliage to the surface and glue the snow. After doing this to the rest of the pieces, we get a nice uniform look of a snowy, desolate, rocky canyon. Slap them on the table like we planned out earlier and get your armies because we're ready for battle or adventure of an epic proportion. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or thought it was helpful, share it with your wargaming or roleplaying friends. Let me know in the comments below if there are any specific terrain pieces or environments you want to see me create or try and make out of recycled materials or garbage pieces so that you don't have to go buy those big boxes of terrain for hundreds of dollars. In the next video, we'll be getting into a little bit of free 3D printing terrain of my own design, so stick around for that. Stay creative!